Hey guys, welcome back to the Watches and Giggles channel. I'm Chris from Chicago. First off, as always, everyone, thank you so much for joining me today. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Thank you for stopping by. And if you're returning, thank you so much for coming back. I do appreciate it. All right, guys, in, uh, in today's vid, we're going to be discussing Tudor and another review of my Tudor GMT. I've had it for about a year now, so I wanted to discuss my thoughts and feelings about my Tudor GMT still, and as well about the brand Tudor and why I will be adding some more Tudors here to the collection. So we're going to get into all that in just a minute, but before we do, we will see what I'm wearing. And of course, star of the show today is the Tudor GMT. Yeah, guys, the Diet Pepsi. So let's get it off the wrist here. Take my ring off so I don't scratch the watch. And we'll get into the watch itself and the brand Tudor. So I've had this watch for about a year now. And honestly, I didn't think I was going to love it as much as I did. I mean, I wanted it. I lusted it after it for about two years. If you watch my earlier vids, I've had some trials and tribulations to try to get a hold of it. Uh, then I finally did, and it is a thick, thick watch, okay? Uh, there's no getting around it. It's a chunky monkey. It's a big boy. You can see I do wear this a lot. Uh, it's just a thick watch. It's about 15 millimeters um, high, and yeah, I mean, there's no getting around that. So if you have a smaller wrist, this particular watch uh, may not be for you, but it does wear well. As you can see, the end links here move very nicely and just drape straight down on your wrist. So it gives a better fit than some watches that are this large. But I thought, I don't know, I thought I might even sell it at some point. But not only after a year with this watch, Am I not going to sell it? I want to add more. And if you watched my previous video, I am adding the BB58, the Blue Bay, uh, which I've had multiple chances to buy that watch. Didn't do it. it was for other reasons at the time, not the watch per se. It was when I was waiting for my Explorer and the AD was did one of those sneaky things. Hey, we got something in for you and you're really going to like it. Come on by and see it. And I thought it was the Explorer and it happened to be a Tudor Blue Bay, which at the time... I probably should have just bought it, but uh, I didn't because I was just pissed off. I was waiting so long for the Explorer, the 214-270, now disc discontinued, excuse me, and now I know why, uh, because it was being discontinued and they weren't pumping them out as much as they normally were, and Rolex isn't pumping out any watches. They're not putting out any more. They're making the same amounts, and, you know, demand's at an all-time high, supply and demand, but... This watch, guys, the aesthetics of this watch, I really love. It definitely is a vintage-inspired GMT slash diver because it does have 200 meters of water resistance. The colors on the bezel, I love. The indices, I have grown to love even more because it's not a maxi dial. Smaller indices on this watch. The red is beautiful. It pops in the sunlight. The blue is a muted blue. Uh, it does pop a little bit in the sunlight, can also be mistaken as a Coke. The font on the bezel is beautiful. The dial is a matte black finish with a pebbly grain. The rose is absolutely stunning on the crown there. Uh, the package that Tudor is offering nowadays for the money uh, is what Rolex used to be. These are tool watches. Now, Rolex is still a tool watch, don't get me wrong. And I know we throw around, throw around the word tool uh, a lot in the community. You know, what is or what isn't a tool watch? Anything can be a tool watch, right? But Rolex were made to be tools. They, each watch does a specific thing, and Tudor does the same thing. And I think what Tudor is offering nowadays is what Rolex was 20 years ago. And I really like the aluminum insert, the bezel. Uh, I think it's going to age really well. And you can tell from older Rolexes and older Tudors that the bezel gets a cool faded, washed out, almost ghost sometimes. Yeah, it'll get some nicks and here and there, but I think it adds 
a lot of character. And I've also now decided to add uh, the new Tudor, Tudor, excuse me, Chrono, the Panda version, because I don't have a white dial in my collection. I actually think the reverse Panda is more legible, but I don't have a white dial, and I think it's really cool. It's like a creamy white. I had a chance to try on a reverse Panda the other day, and it didn't do it for me. Well, I also had a chance now today, earlier, to try on the Panda, uh, not on a bracelet, but on a strap, on the NATO strap, and I thought it was spectacular. I really do like that white. And I placed an order for that now. So I have two new Tudors coming, as well as my wife's 36 millimeter Rolex. But Tudor has been connecting with me a little more lately than even, even my Rolexes. Um, and I'm not sure why. I think maybe it's because of what Rolex is turning into. And Rolex is a beautiful luxury watch. I love Rolex. I am still a fanboy. But it is frustrating that mere mortals like myself can't really get that many. And I do have three. Uh, but I'm not a guy with the means to buy everything and anything when I get the call. Not that I get the call really much anymore because I lost my main AD. So I'm trying to establish some new relationships. Um, but I don't have the means to buy whatever I want. And you really need to be able to do that nowadays uh, to establish, you know, a VIP and super VIP uh, status. It's all about money for the most part. Yes, relationships do matter, but, you know, it's you need to buy what you can or buy when you're told to buy or when you get the call. I mean, it's a crazy game nowadays and it's a money game. And I get it. If you got the money, you know, money talks and BS walks, guys. So I don't fault anyone for getting all the Rolexes they want. But it, the Rolex is all almost a commodity nowadays. It's turning into to something else than an enthusiast watch. In the community, in our community, uh, it is. I mean, it's still an enthusiast watch. We love Rolex. We love what it used to stand for. And we love, we love the new models. But uh, for most of us, they're almost impossible to get. I know some guys that have spent a lot of money at ADs that are not getting calls and are getting frustrated now. And it depends where you are in the world. In Chicago, it's very hard to get any Rolex because they just eliminated my uh, AD. Uh, so down to two ADs in Chicago, and this is Chicago proper, the boutique on Michigan Avenue and Rancy Jewelers on Oak Street. But, you know, Besides that, guys, there's no other authorized dealers uh, for Rolex in Chicago proper. Yes, in the Burbs and outside of Chicago and Illinois, there are many, but I'm just talking specifically for Chicago. So, Tudor is very accessible. Uh, I know the new Chrono may be a little hard to come by. Maybe the new Tudor and Silver and the new Gold one that came out might be a little hard. But you'll be able to get the Panda and Reverse band, uh, Panda Chronos if you just wait, you just need to have a little patience. Don't pay, uh, don't pay the premium because I think the panda's going for around, I don't know, maybe fifteen hundred upwards of two thousand, and I think uh, the reverse panda may be around a thousand or fifteen hundred. Not crazy premiums, but still, you're not going to have to pay a premium for these tutors if you just wait. This GMT was super super hot. Couldn't buy it for a long time, and guess what? They're on every shelf now. The Tudor Blue Bay. Uh, they had it in my AD that I'm using now on the strap in the case. I want it on the bracelet. So, yeah, okay, the bracelet version for the Tudor uh, BB58, the Blue Bay, and the black with the gilt dial, you may have to wait a little bit. But, you know, if you want it on the strap or the NATO, you'll be able to get it. I mean, they're in shelves now. They're on shelves now, I should say. As well as um, the Reverse Panda uh, that I tried on was on a was on a strap, and they had it in the case. So, yeah, the bracelet versions may be a little hard to come by, but just wait, guys. If you want these Tudor watches, you'll get them. But is Tudor positioning themselves in 10 years or so to be Rolex? And, you know, Rolex, who knows what's going to happen uh, with prices? You know, inflation is going crazy right now. I won't get into too much talking about investing money and where the stock market's going and where our dollar's going. But looks like inflation uh, in the United States anyway, speaking just for the United States, is uh, <laughs> we're going at an all-time high at the moment. Uh, so 
our dollars worth a little less, things are costing a little more. Uh, what is Tudor going to cost 10 years down the road from now? Well, probably a lot more, obviously, with inflation. So if you want the watches now, uh, I'd say probably buy them. But Tudor guy specifically has been speaking to me as what Rolex used to stand for. And that's a watch that you could go into the store and try on. And I know that's part of the game. That is what Rolex wants. They want us to not be able to buy Rolex and be pushed to Tudor. But that's working in a sense. And it is working on me to a degree. But I do like the product that they're putting out, which is what Rolex used to be or used to stand for years ago. Now it's all about limiting supplies and obviously supply and demand. And, you know, ADs are keeping the watches in the back, even if they get them and no one wants them, they'll just wait till someone calls for them. It, you know, it's a big, huge game right now. We'll see what happens down the road. But guys, I don't see it getting any better anytime soon. The market may stabilize with Rolex as we may come down from these top tier prices, but it probably won't be you know, back to normal where steel sports are in the case anytime soon. Yeah, the premium may go down. I mean, God, I said the other day, you know, steel subs going for, with the data is going for around 15 or 16,000. That's crazy. Will they come down to 12 or 13? Eh, possible. But I don't see them going back to non-premiums and no wait lists and all this. I mean, that, I don't think that's ever going to happen. I think those days are long gone. So, the new watch that you can walk into the AD and buy is Tudor. And not only is that a fact, but these watches aesthetically, to me, just look great. And I think they're going to age great as well. So to me, guys, uh, Tudor is really awesome. The products that they're pumping out now really speak to me. I find myself, I do wear my Rolexes every day. I've been wearing them to work, but now since... I just gave birth, or not me, gave birth. <laughs> my wife gave birth, and I have my son that's four months. Uh, when I come home, I put on my GMT because I'm not worried about it getting knocked around and uh, just a little more peace of mind. And yeah, I got some scratches, you know, here and there. I've had it for a year. I do take good care of my watches, but I'm not too worried about it, you know, and that's why I'm adding two more to my collection so I have a little more variety with Tudor. And I'm not really worried about banging them around. My Rolexes, now they're, you know, my Bruce Wayne, the Rolex Batman, or some are still calling it the Batgirl. <laughs> uh, you know, Unworn, I think, is going for around 20K now. I mean, which is crazy. Uh, my newly discontinued Explorers going for, you know, 10, 11, 12, 13, depending on condition. You know, my Sea Dweller, that's the one with kind of the dog of the range at the moment. I think is going for 13, maybe 14, you know, but who knows where they're going to go in prices. And I think Tudor guys uh, could be the Rolex of the future. I know they are, they are a sister brand, but uh, I think these, uh, these watches are going to age well. And I think they are a great value proposition. Uh, you can find this watch used for around 3,500. Uh, which is great and what Rolex used to be. You used to be able to buy Rolexes on the aftermarket for less than what they were worth. Can you believe that? <laughs> I mean, wow, how did that happen? <laughs> yeah, so this GMT was super hard to get. Now it's not. Now it's even going for a discount. You know, used, you won't have to pay full list. And yeah, a little bit of a ramble, guys, but I really like Tudor. I'm expanding my Tudor collection uh, to two more pieces. And I'm really excited about it. So be on the lookout for the unboxing of the BB58 and the Chrono Panda. And that's it, guys. Uh, that's going to do it for today. Hope everyone's doing well. And I'll talk to you next time. Take care.